everybody this week's ministry update. Remember that God loves you. Good morning, everyone. Happy Father's Day to all our fathers out there. Welcome. It is a blessing to be together as usual. The parish news contains all of the announcements for the things that are coming up, and it is indeed a busy summer with lots going on. It also includes the connection card, and the connection card is your ticket to anything you might need from me or from the church office, or if you're visiting with us and would like to be added to our mailing lists, please fill it out with the appropriate contact information, and the connection card can be placed in the offering plate later on during our service when the offerings are received. As you saw from Miss Rachel's video a moment ago, Luther Rock Camp took place this week. It was a blast. I was there until Thursday, and um, they got back last night at 10 o'clock, a little late for some of them, but I am very impressed. We have uh, three of the participants here at this morning's service, so that's pretty impressive that they got up and out and got here this morning. And it was a great week of growth for 11 of our young people here in the congregation. And uh, we look forward to sharing many of the, uh, the pictures in the weeks ahead as uh, uh, we sum up Luther Rock. Uh, but the fun doesn't end there as we shift right into music camp this week. So immediately following the 11 o'clock service, we're going to start transforming the campus. If you can come back at 1215 and give us a hand, that would be greatly appreciated, uh, especially as there's things that need to be moved here in the sanctuary to prepare for camp week. And what that means is that the campus is going to be a buzz and crazy this week. So unless you really need something uh, from campus and you want to get run over by a bunch of little kids, don't come during the week. Uh, but you can come on Friday night at 7 o'clock for the final musical production. They'll be working all week on It's All About the Baby. That's their musical, and then 7 o'clock on Friday night here in the sanctuary. If you want to come and see that presentation, you are more than welcome. We'd love to have you, and then we'll do some refreshments afterwards in the fellowship hall. We are looking forward to a great week, finally getting back to music camp after two years off because of uh, everything going on in the world. Um, but that doesn't end our summer fun. Vacation Bible School picks up a few weeks later, uh, the week of July 11th through the 15th. So if you have a child, a grandchild, a neighbor who would like to be involved in that for the week, we'd love to have you. Registration is still open. Go to the church website. The Stepping Stones Preschool continues to look for uh, uh, new teachers and staff, support staff, as we move towards the new school year in August. If that's something you're interested in, please reach out to Miss Lori, the director of the school. And uh, we've had a couple of our members here apply, and we love it. When members of the church get connected with the school, I think it's a mutual blessing both ways. So uh, we'd love to have you if you're interested. So uh, reach out to us for more information on that. A week from today, I will begin the summer session of the Faith Foundations class. The Faith Foundations class is an introduction to the Christian faith as we see it as Lutherans. It's 10 Sundays uh, from 1015 to 1045. And this is open to everyone, families, children, uh, it's great if we have all those people and we have all those different perspectives, and uh, that'll take place over in the parish hall between services. So when you walked into the sanctuary today, you noticed that we've now entered into the long green season, the season after Pentecost. This, uh, the color green reminds us of growth of the grass and the trees and the leaves and things like that, and uh, that is the 
the symbolic theme of the season after Pentecost, that everything that we celebrated in the first part of the church here, that Jesus was born for us, he died for us, he rose, he ascended, and sent his Holy Spirit, how does that help us grow in our daily walk of faith? So this season after Pentecost brings us a lot of Christian living type of themes, and it starts today as we hear Jesus cast the demon out of the demon-possessed man, and it raises the question for us, what possesses us? that needs to be cast out. So let us take a moment of silent prayer, and then we're going to rise and join together in our opening song, Awesome God. Please stand as you're able. spirit Amen. we come before our lord in confession no longer as slaves but as god's own children and heirs of all he graciously gives we confess from our mouth that we were captive and enslaved to our sin and have, and have neglected the name that you have given us as your children like those in isaiah's day we are rebellious people who walk in a way that is neither good nor faithful following our own devices and desires. For the many times we forget Christ's power and victory and all we ever need, fear in this body and life, Through the mercy and sacrifice of our Lord Jesus, and in spite of our sinful nature and willful breaking of his law given out of love, he calls us his children and his heirs to set us free and to live in the victory he has won for us. Through Christ alone we have gained access to his grace by which we now stand. I therefore declare the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. But you, O Lord, do not be far away. O my help, 
come quickly to my aid. Save me from the mouth of the lion, from the horns of the wild oxen you have rescued me. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. of a sorrowing world. In your mercy, set us free from the chains that bind us and defend us from everything that is evil through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading this morning comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 65. I was ready to be sought out by those who did not ask, to be found by those who did not seek me. I said, here I am, here I am, to a nation that, that, that did not call on my name. I held out my hands all day long to a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good, following their own devices. A people who provoke me to my face continu continually sacrificing in gardens and offering incense on bricks, who sit inside tombs and spend the night in secret places, who eat swine's flesh with broth of abominable things in their vessels, who say, keep to yourself, do not come near me, for I am too holy for you. These are a smoke in my nostrils, a fire that burns all day long. See, it is written before me, I will not keep silent, but I will repay. I will indeed repay into their laps their inequities and their ancestors' inequities. Together, says the Lord, because they offered incense on the mountains and reviled me on the hills, I will measure into their laps full payment for their actions. Thus, says the Lord, as the wine is found in the cluster, and they say, do not destroy it, for it, there is a blessing in it. So I will do for my servants' sake and not destroy them all. I will bring forth descendants from Jacob and from Judah inheritors in my mountains. My chosen shall inherit it, and my servants shall settle there. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll remain seated as we sing our next song. Ten thousand reasons to always bless the Lord. the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship. 
second reading this morning comes from Galatians chapter 3. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, you are are all children of God through faith. As many of you were baptized into Christ, have clothed yourself with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. The word of the Lord. Speak to God. 
please stand as you're able. Gospel according to St. Luke, the eighth chapter. Then Jesus and his disciples arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As he stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, what is your name? He said, legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these, so he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herd saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened, and when they came to Jesus, They found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him, But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated as I invite forward our children. Good morning. So since you're here so early, I guess you didn't make dad breakfast in bed, right? No, no. Do you have any special plans for today, for Father's Day? Hamburgers? You're going to cook them hamburgers? You're just going to leave them alone? That's probably what he wants on Father's Day, right? Just be left alone? Yeah. So yeah, so Father's Day is all about family, right? There's a picture of my family. So here's my oldest, oldest son, Harrison. This is my youngest son, Hunter. There's Samantha. And then Mackenzie, and then you know Miss Lisa, and then there I am. This is a picture from a few years ago, right? Families are really cool. We're connected to each other. We love each other. We know how to fight each other. We know how to make up with each other and all these things, right? But what's uh, really nice today, as we remember our earthly families and the gift that they are, is that our readings for today remind us that we don't just have these earthly families. St. Paul came along and talked about when we are baptized into Jesus, it's no longer about all the things in the world divide us, like being male or female or Greek or or Jew, as he used from the language back then, or American or or Afghanistanian or African or whatever it may be. What God does when God calls us his children is says, you know what, you have your earthly families, but you're also part of of a much bigger and blessed family, the family that is the church. And so what's really cool is that sometimes in life, our earthly families don't always get along or aren't always healthy, right? Sometimes we get into situations where earthly families don't talk to each other anymore, and that's really sad. But God then gives us this gift of the people, our family, that we look at and get together with every single week as we come into church. And these are all our brothers and sisters in Jesus. And these are all our extended family. And these are people who love us and care for us and are there for us just like our earthly family is. So today we celebrate our earthly families. And every day in God we celebrate 
our church family. Amen? Let's pray together. Fold your hands, close your eyes, bow your heads, repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for the gift of fathers and my earthly family. But especially thank you for my extended family, the church. Help me to know their love and to share that love. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. In recent years, identity politics has become a phenomenon that has greatly influenced the way we think, how we feel, the values and beliefs that we have, and the hopes that it will affect how we vote. The idea behind identity politics is that we see and recognize the differences in each other in a way that it causes us to have more respect for each other in the hopes that in respecting each other more, we'll have some more freedom, we'll have some more value in life. But unfortunately, all too often, that all seems to fall apart when those seemingly identifying labels that are placed upon certain peoples or certain groups, when the peoples in those groups that are identified and used for political purposes don't follow the pre-described ideas, notions, and values that are set forth for those groups. They don't follow the way it was intended to go when such distinctions were made. And so what was supposed to be something liberating, leading to more respect, does exactly the opposite. For when those who are identified as a certain group or culture or ethnicity or whatever it may be that has such value and importance in political terms, when they don't follow the way those political agendas are supposed to go, then all of a sudden they're not free and not welcome anymore. And all too often in life, that seems to be the way things go. We're led in certain directions, we're influenced by certain ideas or thoughts or values or whatever they may be in the hopes that those things would capture our minds and our hearts and our souls almost in a way that it possesses us so we follow and do what the group wants to do or what the leaders of that group want us to do. And before we realize it, sometimes those forces can be so influential, we don't realize what we've lost or lost sight of anymore. Let's face it. There are lots of different influences and forces that seek to capture us, to almost possess us in a way that we lose sight of who we are. So the question raised before us today is, What possesses us? There are so many different things in life that we pursue that seem to be harmless. We put our time, our energy, our efforts, our resources into those things. And after a while, we may not realize that the pursuit of such things causes us to lose other things that are of value. And we may not realize that all that time and energy placed into those things has taken control of our lives, literally has come to possess us. I mean, there's oftentimes, especially here in this nation, this drive to be successful. And sometimes that drive for success can become all-consuming. The drive for money or for pleasure or for our children to be successful in everything they do or that desire for us to be admired and respected. And all of a sudden, those things can become so controlling, so possessive of our lives, we lose sight of the things that really have a place, really have a value, and really have a purpose. And I find it ironic that all too often in our culture and our life today, we hear people say things like, I'm not a religious person, yet they religiously pursue certain things that they believe are going to lead them to happiness and contentment, only to find out in the long run that those things don't provide the fulfillment and the joy that they are looking for in so many different ways. There are influences, there are unclean spirits that surround us 
that seek to control our thoughts, our behaviors, our desires, and all too often those things cause us to lose sight of the real gifts and the blessings that God gives to us. In the Gospel lesson today, we hear about this miracle where Jesus heals the man possessed by the demons. Now, this miracle is somewhat challenging for us today. Because many of the things that were identified in biblical times as demon possession, we know today because of the advancements in medicine and in science that there are other causes behind it than simply demons. However, that does not negate the reality of angels and demons and forces of good and evil that we can't see and we don't understand. So for our purposes today, as we hear this biblical story, we're going to take it at face value. That as Luke records for us, this man was possessed by demons. And Jesus came along and performs this miraculous exorcism in order to restore him to health. To give him control of his life again. And it's in the details of this miracle that we see some of those challenges that we face in our own lives that often seek to possess our minds, our thoughts, our time, and our energy. The first thing that jumps out about this miracle is the setting in which Jesus does the miracle. We hear that he goes to the other side of the Sea of Galilee to the Gerasenes. And what we know about the Gerasenes is that they were, they were not your typical Jewish people and community. They were Gentiles. They were those that faithful Jews would have considered unclean outside of those promised chosen, blessed people of God. Not only do we know this by the geography and the location, but we know it because when Jesus casts the demon out of the man, they enter into a herd of pigs. No good, faithful first century Jew would be caught anywhere near a herd of pigs. Pigs were unclean, they were unholy, and the fact that there were herdsmen watching over the pigs shows even more specifically the details of this being a non-Jewish place. So Jesus already in his ministry is starting to break through the bonds of the labels that we have towards one another in the world. He's going outside what the apostles, what those followers would expect he's going outside the faithful Jews to those who would be considered unclean and unpure and he does this miracle to restore the demon possessed man to health then there are some commentators that speculate that the demon possessed man was a former Roman soldier who because of everything that he had performed himself and seen during his time on duty as a soldier that he was suffering from some sort of demonic possessed post-traumatic stress disorder. Raises another level of question for us about sometimes how we see people, how we sometimes see things and we value them and we look at them and what we do to restore health to people who are hurting. But whatever the circumstances may have been behind the demon possessed man, Jesus comes to do what Jesus does. He comes to him to set him free, to heal him, to restore his life that is being destroyed by sin and evil. And it's in the way that the exorcism takes place that we get some important steps in identifying those things that possess us and how we can be truly freed from those things that seek to possess us. An interesting detail about this miracle is that when Jesus comes to the man, the demons recognize Jesus and his power. Not only do they recognize Jesus and his power, but they also recognize who they are and the fate that is before them. They beg Jesus not to be sent into the abyss. The abyss was an Old Testament way of referring to hell, to Satan, to everything that is evil, to everything that seeks to tear down and destroy that which God makes good. The demons seemingly recognize that their purpose is for evil, and recognizing the power of Jesus, they beg Jesus for mercy. Don't send them to the abyss. Let them go into the pigs. 
which Jesus grants, and then the pigs go drown themselves, seemingly releasing the demons from their future fate. In our lives, when we are surrounded by all these unclean spirits, all these things that seek to influence us towards things that aren't so healthy, it's when we can see those things for what they are, when we can recognize those things for the unclean and unhealthy things that they are influencing our lives in bad ways, that we begin to make the steps towards being freed from those things. And it's when we recognize the place and the power of God in our lives that things begin to get back in order. It's at those moments in our lives when we begin to examine our priorities and realign them, when we look at what we're doing with our time and our resources and our energy, and when we see the place of God and when we turn back to the power and the presence of God, especially in the gifts of the church offered here, God's word and sacraments, that the things that seek to possess us don't have power over us. And we find the true freedom that we need to live our lives in those things that are healthy and really should be valued. By the end of the gospel lesson, the man formerly possessed by the demons wants to stay with Jesus. But Jesus doesn't grant his request. He gives him another job. He wants him to go out and tell his story. Tell the good news of how he was healed and restored. And again, we see the heart of God coming through the sacred scriptures, coming through the miracles that Jesus does. That God comes into our lives, comes into the world to free us, to truly restore us to health. That was the point that Isaiah the prophet was making in our Old Testament lesson today when he talked about how God always has his arms extended, especially to nations that reject him. That even when we're stubbornly rejecting the healthy things that God lays down for us, God is unceasingly extending his arms to welcome us and realign our lives. That's the heart and soul of God's presence and power and work in our lives. There are so many forces, so many unclean spirits in our lives, that especially through the use of labels and identifying us according to earthly things, want to hold us back and hold us down. But the power of God's love always transcends and breaks through those things. That's why in our epistle lesson, St. Paul said so beautifully, as many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ, there is no longer Jew or Greek, there is no longer slave or free, there is no longer male or female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. So my friends, if you want to be possessed by something, if you want to be labeled something, there is no greater label than baptized into Christ. For it's the only label that we have in our lives that truly leads us to freedom. Amen. Please stand as you're able. God makes beautiful things out of the dust. God makes beautiful things out of us.
Let us confess our faith, the faith in which we baptize with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection, the resurrection of the body, and, and the life, life everlasting. everlasting. Amen. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the Church, the creation, and all who are in need. Holy God, you hear the cries of those who seek you. Equip your church with servants who reveal the continuous call of your outstretched hands and your promises of a home in you. God of grace, you hear the cries of the earth. Restore places where land, air, and waterways have been harmed. Guide us to develop and implement sources of energy and food production that do not harm the earth. God of grace, you hear the cries of those who are marginalized or cast out. Guide us continually toward the end of oppression in all its forms. Bring true freedom and human flourishing to all your beloved children. God of grace, you hear the cries of those who suffer. Come to the aid of all who are homeless, naked, hungry, and sick especially all those we name at this time, silently or out loud. Bring peace to any experiencing mental illness that they can clearly recognize your loving presence. God of grace. You hear the cries of those who celebrate and those who grieve on this Father's Day. Nurture mutual love and tender care in all relationships. Comfort those for whom this day brings sadness or longing. God of grace, we give thanks for the faithful departed whose lives proclaimed all you had done for them. At the last, unite us with them as we make our home in you. God of grace, God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. Please be seated as we have the opportunity now to give back that which God has given to us by receiving the offerings. <laughs>
give thanks unto the Lord our God. He was right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and proper that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who by his power, dominion, sacrificial death, and victorious resurrection has freed all people from the binding chains and darkness of sin and death, opening to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and singing. Spirit, spirit of gentleness, born through the wilderness, calling and free. Blessed are you, Lord, victor over Satan, destroyer of eternal death, and giver of eternal life through your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant us your spirit that we faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross, and receive as your children and heirs the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and his blood. Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Drink of it all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it for the remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. For God has loved us so much that he has given to us his son to be our savior. Therefore, as God's beloved children, we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you call us your children, heirs of the blessings you bestow without any merit or worthiness in us. We thank you for the victory won for us out of your mercy and for feeding us with this foretaste of the feast to come when all your heirs will be free from sin and sorrow through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. You unravel me with a melody you surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears have gone let's all sing together i'm no longer
Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks. Thanks be to God.